The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, hi, I'm Matt Sorrells with HGSI, and uh, we're going to do a really short presentation on uh, HGSI's annotation tools and our charting. So uh, you bring up the charting, and uh, you've got uh, basically uh, a simple chart of, of simple default chart there's no fancy indicators uh, and obviously you can pick more complicated views and we'll talk about that with annotations here in a second so uh, the annotation tool is this little icon here on the end um, it brings up a, a little menu a palette of tools that floats on top um, of your window and you can move this wherever you'd like uh, so that you can uh, um, see the window that you're working on depending on the size of your screen. Now, one of the one of the handy tricks on the annotation tool, uh, if you uh, if you press Alt A on your keyboard, it'll bring up the annotation tool. And Alt A will also hide the annotation tool, which can be really handy if uh, you want to quit drawing on this chart and you actually want to do uh, you know use the crosshairs on the chart. Um, uh, you can um, uh, switch the annotation mode on and off with the keyboard uh, really quickly. So um, now one interesting thing is uh, the annotation tool come, they're restored wherever you put them on the screen, which isn't really handy all the time. And so if you, uh, if you do Alt Shift A, It'll actually bring the annotation tool up under your mouse, which is a really handy shortcut for, uh, especially if you have a very large monitor or several monitors. So let's talk about the annotation tool. So the idea behind the annotation tools is it allows you to put notes, lines, and, and text on a chart. And those lines and text will be remembered the next time you bring up that same symbol the lines and text will be restored. Now, there are some issues with how things get restored depending on what view you're looking at, uh, because uh, you know every charting view may have its own special combination of windows and indicators, and your annotations try to remap those annotations to the windows. Uh, so. Uh, as a rule, you're going to want to restore, you know, you're going to want to look at your annotations uh, with the same view you drew them with uh, to, in order for everything to be great. So when the annotations are up, uh, the, the basic rule is uh, you press down the left mouse button and it'll create a tool uh, and allow you to, uh, uh, to drag out a line. When you let, let go of the left mouse button, it, drops the line in place. There's a, a collection of the top line of the annotation tools or the, the tools themselves, the draw, there's add text, there's the select, the delete, and the delete all. So if you've just drawn a line and you don't like it, if you hit the delete annotation, it'll remove that line. Um, so you can have several lines and uh, the delete will just delete the last one going backwards. Um, when you've drawn a line, if you don't like the line, you need to switch to the select mode by selecting the select annotation, and the selected annotation will have the two uh, the two bars on the end. And when you're in select mode, you can move the line. If you click near the center of the line, it will allow you to move both ends. If you click near the ends of the line, it will allow you to move just that end. The, the line, um, if you notice down at the bottom of the, um, in the status bar, there's a, uh, it tells you uh, where the line started and where the line ends and uh, what the change and how many periods of time this line takes. And so uh, if you move the line, uh, the beginning of the line where you started drawing versus where you end the drawing, you can change the orientation of those. So this line starts here and goes to the end. Um, 
it, it goes the other way because I reversed them. And so that's why the periods are negative. And the, um, uh, the line tool, uh, the second, section here in the annotation tools are the type of line to draw. And so the standard is a closed line. The, uh, the extended line is just like the closed line, only it extends out infinitely with dotted lines. And so there's still a, um, a beginning and an end. And so there's a trend start and end and how many periods and percent change, but then you can see hypothetically where that line would continue going on into infinite space. The, um, uh, the Fibonacci retracements allow you to um, see Fibonacci uh, values uh, at the various percentages uh, from uh, the, the line you drew, which is the 100 to 0%. And you can see where the various points are uh, that match up with the Fibonacci percentages. And so you'll find that uh, a lot of stocks fall into these, uh, the, uh, uh, a range will often uh, form on these line numbers. And as you scroll the chart, the line remembers where you drew it. And so you can have lines in the past as well as now Let's see, um, the uh, uh, the eighths retracement is just like the Fibonacci, only it uses eighths, so it divides the sections up uh, so that you can see uh, hypothetical resistance points or uh, uh, replacement points. We also do Fibonacci fans, which is the same kind of thing um, with uh, Fibonacci percentages on the, the fans. I don't think this is all that useful, but there you go. Um, we also have um, an arrow, a box, and a circle. And so the arrow tool draws a little arrow wherever you uh, point the line. The box draws a box, and the circle draws a circle. And then you can, just like the others, you can move these around. And you can um, resize them if you'd like. Now, uh, when the line is drawn, uh, the this third box controls the size and type of the line. And so uh, you can change to a thicker line. You can change to a dotted line, a two-point line, a four-point line, uh, a couple of dashes and dotteds uh, uh, to try to find the thing. Then the last section down here allows you to pick the color. You can only pick one of these colors. We don't have a, we don't allow you to choose your own color, but uh, uh, we have most standard colors. And as a rule, you should pick colors. Obviously, if you pick a white color on a white screen, you're going to have trouble seeing it. So I'd recommend you stick with colors that are going to show up on the types of views you're looking at. And so, uh, then the, the last thing you can do with our annotation tools is the text. When you, uh, when you click on the, the, the chart, it will put text there. Uh, the text dialog comes up. Um, and then uh, when you press OK, the text will appear. And the text follows the same color that you've selected in the annotation tool. And you can also move the text, although you cannot resize text. The text box is always the right size for whatever the text. If you double click the text box, it'll bring the edit back up so that you can change the text um, if you'd like. So you could, uh, um, you can add whatever additional text or delete the text. Um, you can also change the font that's being used. And this uses your Windows system fonts, um, which uh, if you're like me, you have zillions of fonts. Um, and you can uh, choose a font that, uh, uh, and a font size that you'd like. And that's really, uh, 
it for the annotations. The, the annotations will be remembered. If, so if you switch to a different company and then switch back, the annotations will be restored. If you switch to a different view, the annotations try to, to find their home using the Windows name. And so if you switch to another view that also has a price window, the annotations should stay there. But see, this view doesn't have a price window. And so the annotations, they're still there, they just aren't visible because there is no price window on this chart. Um, if there is a window named price, then the annotations will be restored. And so if you're ever wondering why you can't see your annotations, you will you'll need to change back to the view that your annotations were put in. You can put annotations in any window. Uh, you can put annotations in, for example, uh, the volume window, and those will be restored in the volume window. You can put annotations in other custom windows as well. Uh, there's no limits on that. And there's no limits on the number of annotations, although uh, um, keeping track of them, uh, you might uh, find that it, it just clutters the screen more than you'd want, which is why the last button is the clear all annotations and it'll clear them all out. Matthew, does it clear them on the original? If you're, if you're off on another view? You, you created them. If with you're one. off on another view, it'll clear them. It'll clear that. It'll clear all the annotations. Yes. So uh, if you're off on another view and you can't actually see any annotations, but they are there, and you you, you do the clear, it will clear all the annotations, even the ones you can't see at the moment. Uh, so you need to be sure you really want to delete them uh, um, when uh, you're. Yeah. Uh, when you're looking at views that uh, don't have the same window names, and some of these views, uh, depending on which views you're using, I, I think this is one of Ron Brown's views. Um, if the view you're using doesn't have the, the same window names, then the annotations won't be restored, but they're still there. And so uh, um, you can actually have annotations that are for this window, and then when you switch back to another a normal view, that annotation won't be visible. Uh, and so in a way, it kind of follows your views. But if, you, uh, if you're in uh, the default view and you clear all annotations, then it will actually delete the annotation, even if it's not visible at this time. Uh, it really does clear them all. And the same is true for the text annotations. You can also annotate things. You can move off into the future uh, if your chart view has additional lines. But it's entirely possible, depending on where you stick your annotations, to actually have an annotation that's not visible unless you zoom out. Uh, you know, because if you stuck an annotation way up here at uh, 266, and then you zoomed in enough so that that level wasn't visible, the annotation will actually be off the screen. And so uh, uh, as a rule, you probably want to keep your annotations close to the chart itself so that uh, it'll tend to be more visible. Although, you know, with volume and stuff, you may, uh, you may want to, to do, uh, you may have some issues with that. Um, uh, one more handy tip when drawing the lines, uh, if you hold down the shift key, it will lock on 90 degrees. So you can draw a straight line or a straight up and down line or a straight right and left line. Um, and that's true for um, the boxes as well. Um, the, the shift key uh, locks you into a square so that uh, normally the box is a rectangle. So you can make it wider or taller than it is high. But if you hold down the shift key, it locks you into square. And the same is true for the circle. You can make an oval, but if you hold down the shift key, it locks you into a, a, a perfectly round circle. And I think that's all the annotation tool uh, tricks that you can, uh, um, you can do with HGSI.